Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and today I'm experimenting with some mica powders. These are from Delphi Glass. There'll be links down in the video description and these are oh, so shiny already. Um, safe for using in a kiln. They should like keep their same color but I am going to put a respirator on so I'm not going to be talking a whole lot because um, it does like make it hard to hear me but I did while I'm putting the mica down I am going to have a respirator on we're going to begin though by I have this cardstock that I cut up and taped together I get my sheets of glass in about a, like typically a standard like 12 inch square um so that's what size I have this cut to and then I'm going to go through with a kiln post and just kind of, oops, touch it in on the sides. And this way it won't um, kind of block the, well, it, it, it holds the sides up. That way the glass and stuff that we put in there doesn't get all over the place. And I am using Bullseye Thin Fire um, Kiln Paper. I do believe that's what it's called. Let's see, it says it on the back. Um, this side down bullseye glass well it's it's the thin kiln paper uh, and I, I like that better than kiln wash um, it cleans off easier it doesn't leave as much texture and I don't have to wait for it to dry so uh, to explain what I'm gonna be doing I'm gonna put down a layer of this and then I'm going to put down a layer of did I use it already here it is um, <laughs> sorry uh, Mosaic size clear glass. I'm using the same COE. The mica is, it doesn't care what COE you use it with. It's just, that's the coefficient of expansion. Like I could use this whether I'm doing lamp work, uh, which is a 104 COE, whether I'm using 90 or 96. Today I am using 96 COE and the firing schedule will be down in the video description, but I'm going to mask up and then we'll get started. Okay, so I know I said I wasn't going to be talking, but <laughs> here we are. Um, let me grab a little, like, spoon. Okay, so I am using... These two tools. And I'm going to open this up. Ooh, it's on my fingers and stuff already. And I'm going to... Ooh, that came out as just a big old glob. Okay, I don't know if I should do the less is more approach. I've never really been one to be like, oh yes, less is more. Um... But let's see what we can accomplish here. Okay, so I probably used a bit more than what I needed to, but I wanted to leave some like chunks <laughs> just to suspend a little bit between some of the other things that we're doing. And I'm going to try to be consistent about what texture I'm leaving too, just to see if that makes any sort of difference when it's all said and done. So I'm just coming through with my paintbrush. There we go. And now I'm going to sprinkle on the clear. Okay, so now I'm going to be coming through with this clear mosaic. And I didn't weigh any of this stuff. <clears throat> we'll see how that goes. So 
So I'm doing this pretty densely because what I'd like to accomplish here is I want, okay, I'm not mixing anything. So I'm going to take my mask off for just a sec. Oops, bumped into the tripod. There we go. Oh, and I was doing so good. Okay, so what I'm trying to accomplish here with the clear glass is that it, as the clear glass melts, as we, you know, fire this, um, I'm hoping the mica covered white will come up in between the different pieces um, of clear glass. Hopefully. This is purely experimental and <laughs> I don't believe in doing anything small, apparently. So I'd like to see how this goes. But yeah, doing these little pieces of clear, I think will give us a cool effect too whenever we then, we're going to be chunking this up into little like tiles for making puddle cabs and we'll be capping them with more clear. Um, just to see, you know, see what happens. And so I'm trying to get a decently even distribution. And now, for again, the sake of, you know, why not? Um, let's see. Ooh, that's pretty. <laughs> I'm going to come through with just a little bit of this sky blue transparent and I'm going to sprinkle it just like in one corner just to see what happens with varying degrees of intensity. So pretty intense in the corner and then I tapered back up and in. I just want to see how that looks. Um, yeah, we could probably do some maybe. And now here is some fine grain light purple, and this is transparent. So I'm going to come in on this side. Just want to see what happens. Yeah, okay, so that's good. So now I'm going to remove the kiln posts and the paper, and we are going to put this through the kiln for its full firing schedule. Um, and then I will meet y'all back here whenever, ooh, that looks nice, whenever, uh, it's cooled and we open the kiln back up, so tomorrow, but through the magic of editing. So this is the following day, and we have some really interesting results. I haven't touched it yet. Okay, the mica powders are still powdery, so that's... That's a thing. It did not at all do what I wanted it to do. <laughs> so I don't know what I did wrong or what. But, I don't know, let's see. Oh no, that's interesting. There's a little bit of texture from where some of it embedded. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this and I'm going to get it rinsed off. Um... And then we're going to make some pendants out of it, so. Okay, so this is how it looks after we've washed it. And I was really hoping, I don't know, that we would have a little bit more of like a cell line around each of these clear. I really love how the purple and the blue, especially the blue, I love that. I think I'm going to do another sheet melt with just whites and blues and stuff with maybe like the silver mica pigment. Or there's like kind of a whitish one that might give it like a little bit of an abalone or like mother of pearl effect. But in any case, it's nice and squeaky. There's a little bit of texture on the surface. But I'm going to cut this stuff up so... Get your safety glasses on. And the way whoa, that's a horrible noise. Um, the way that I do the puddle melts off of sheet melts like this is I'm gonna come through and that's a horrible noise also. Tapping just a few times on the back with my cutter. And I'm gonna come through with these heavy duty running pliers. On thicker chunks of glass like this, it doesn't always go perfectly straight, but I'm not doing stained glass, so I'm not that worried about it. And then I'm going to come through and cut this in half, and I just eyeball it because I want some nice, like, random sizes and stuff. 
you can hear how it kind of jumps a few times on some of those texture bumps. Okay, loud noises. And I'm just kind of chunking, like knocking it on the back. Lining up that running line. Oh. And sometimes that happens. That's okay. <laughs> that adds to the nice random element. I'd really love to be able to get my hands on a ring saw so that I could actually get consistent results and not necessarily do like lines and stuff, but I'd really love to be able to cut this into like crescent moons or hearts and then tack fuse them or fire polish to get like the sharp edges rounded off. And I think that would be really cool. But in the meantime, I'm gonna take my uh, nippers and I like to take off the hard tips from like right there, how that's like a point that you can get some weird effects of that sometimes. So I'm just chunking that and let me grab a empty Tupperware that I use for this purpose. Um, and I'm just going to kind of come through. I eyeball it based off of my grid. I don't think that's a perfect inch, but I'm going to come in at about three quarters of an inch to one inch. A little wider might be better, actually. And I'm just chunking, because if I go too narrow, we get odd shapes like that. It's like this one might be kind of weird. No, it cut nice and straight. And now, but watch out for little sharp bits like that. And now I'm just going to cut these into sections like that. And now I'm going to cut these in half into our bin. And I pick one up. Be very careful to like, I'm very uh, delicate with the glass. Not that the glass needs to be delicate with, but I'm tender and made of meat. So um, I don't want to get glass in my fingertips. And I've tried wearing gloves, but that actually just makes me clumsier. Whereas if I just kind of gently pick everything up, avoiding sharp edges and corners, and just gonna go through. Sometimes if it's a little bit narrow, I'll go ahead and make a big one. So my partner Randy, whenever he's doing this, he actually like marks out a grid and cuts everything very perfectly. Um, we're just very different creatures, but he gets much better results. So you do you and whatever method you like doing, because it's your project, so do it your way. But I'm gonna keep doing this until I have the whole sheet processed. And if you're doing this on, like if you're just making a couple cabs for yourself in like a microwave kiln, like and you're not in like full scale production, like how we're doing here, um, you may be able to go through and if you do a whole sheet like how we did, you could almost quadrant it off or like grid it off and be like, okay, these colors are going to be over here in this section. And you could do a whole experiment sheet. Um, and that that's something I think worth exploring in future videos as well. So I'd love to hear you guys' uh, ideas down in the comments, or if you're watching this in the premiere, hey everybody, thanks for coming and hanging out. If you wanted to watch this in the premiere, but you missed it, be sure to sign up for our newsletter at our website, backtoearthcreations.com, and we send out um, the link notifications, like the, the stream links, every time we have a live stream or a new tutorial or a shop update or just anything like that, you can stay perfectly up to date without having to rely on YouTube uh, to let you know what's going on. So yeah, if you're here in the premiere, I, I can't wait. This is past Vaughn recording this, but future Vaughn, I'm sure, is very excited, at least as excited as current Vaughn is, which we use past Vaughn. Um, we're, all Vons are very excited to hear your ideas. So uh, I'm going to get all this chunked up. So typically, whenever we make our puddle cabs, we would just take a tile like this and then find a similarly sized piece of clear glass that we've cut up. And we'd stack them like so, possibly on top of other colors too, if we want, um, like if this were a little bit more translucent, we would do like maybe an opaque color, a translucent color, and then capped in more clear and make that into a cabochon. But we can also take these same tiles that we've prepped up and use them in our molds. And I wanted to demonstrate that to you guys as well. 
because this can be a really fun way of using like if you have some miscuts um, or like little pointy odd bits or some that are too big or too small or you just want something other than a puddle shape. I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of this is some medium grain white in the same COV as the sheet glass as we're using. And then let's see, I want to try a couple of these little blue tiles that have some gold in them. And I have a little bit of an interest in hmm, maybe, oops, I'm going to get just a little bit of the gold onto my paintbrush here. And I'm going to kind of settle it. I just want to see what happens, like, for science, right? And so I'm just going to tap that very gently in between. And let's take some of this blue. This is a translucent medium grit sky blue. Looks like it has a little speck of black in it. So we can, and I've prepped up this mold with four layers of zip at ZYP. It's a boron nitride high temperature lubricant. Yeah, honestly, I probably could have done that gold above the blue just to see what would happen. But here we are. And I've let it, the, I've let the zip dry completely that way you know you can rub it and it's not coming off it's not flaking up in powder or anything uh it's much more powdery after it's been fired in the kiln but for now it's it's pretty all right um i want to speckle in just a little bit of white as well just like little like floaty beep boop <laughs> just trying that out I don't know. I, again, I, we're experimenting here, so there's no wrong way of doing this so long as we stick to, um, you know, the same COEs and trying to make sure that our, you know, we're laying stuff in correctly. Okay, and now we can cap this with, here I have some mosaic size clear frit. Again, in the same COE. And I'm just going to do maybe three scoops of this. The bigger chunks of glass that you use, the less bubbles you'll have. I'm doing two and a half scoops. The less bubbles you'll have in your final piece. But some fritz can be a little scuzzy. Like, you never know. Well, I never know. At my current level of experience, I, it's all just a crapshoot. <laughs> so... Ah, there's that. Um, let's see. Okay. And then on the other mold, we can do another experiment. I'm using some more of this. Let's do another base of white. I'm running kind of low on it, but I really like that effect of whenever I'm using... Oops, bumped the tripod. When I'm using translucent glass, I really like to back it with a lighter opaque color because I feel like it makes the translucent color that I'm using pop just a little bit more. And then we can come in here with, there's that one. And I'm going to try maybe just one in the middle. And then I'm going to come in here with this powdered. No, it's not powder. It's a fine light purple. Just sprinkling a bit. I'm going to clear it off of the surface. You know what? No, I'm going to leave it there. I'm really interested to see how this plays out. Again, I don't mean to keep bumping the tripod. 
And I'm just trying to scooch the glass away from the very edges of the mold because I don't want it to bind to any of the zip and then travel towards the center as the glass heats and melts in a full fuse. So, which by the way, there will be our firing schedule down in the video description. But I'm gonna move this over. Let's get a side view. So here you can see I've just slightly mounted up. I could go a little bit further, but uh, I think this will be all right. Use your own discretion on your own pieces. So I'm gonna pick this up and move it on over into our kiln. And I'm gonna get this fired and then I'll meet you guys back here whenever, um, actually I'm gonna get it loaded all the way and then show y'all how that looks. So this is how I've loaded the bottom layer with a couple of different molds and then I'm going to be putting in a kiln shelf and some kiln paper and doing the next level. Here you can see how the kiln looks fully loaded. Um, it's a 16 inch bed with a, and I'm using a 12 inch kiln shelf here with some little one inch and half inch kiln posts and I found that gives plenty of air to circulate um, or rather plenty of heat to circulate to the molds beneath. I hold uh, my temperatures for up, about two hours to really let the whole kiln get up to temperature. I don't want to just let it get to where you know, there by the temperature sensor is at the temperature. Like I want the whole thing nice and homogenous. That way everything heats properly and everything anneals properly. Um, so yeah, my firing schedule is down below. But we're going to go ahead and get this fired, and then I'll meet you guys back here uh, through the magic of editing in just a moment. But for me, it'll be tomorrow. So, see ya! So this is how the following day, there's still about 100 degrees, so there's still some heat coming off of them. But, ooh, some of them came out super pretty. I actually, I knew I wouldn't mind just the white tones in this, but some of them, uh, apparently I really need to work on working with mica powders in my fused glass because I have no idea what I'm doing. Somebody from the internet, please point me in the right direction. Uh, but yeah, we'll get these cleaned up and take a closer look. Okay, um, so we are in the kitchen cleaning cabs. This is how one of them came out. And now there's a little bit of like texture where the mica pigment, like the mica powder, has lifted towards the surface, but it is not scraping or rubbing off. It's really embedded in there. So there's that one, which I really kind of like how it floats. <clears throat> I'm wondering if this wouldn't be pretty cool with it like capped with a flat piece of clear. Definitely experimental, for sure. Set that off to the side. Let's run it. What do we got in here? Oh, now see, that's... Sorry, the dog just bumped into the tripod. I didn't mean to. Oh, maybe it'll focus. I do really like the cells in the white. I think that lends it some cool depth that isn't really visible from one side, but then boom, there it is. It craters in the moon almost. But, uh, yeah, not, not overly, like, blown away by... <clears throat> the mica powder just on the plain white. I think maybe if I had a carrying medium for in it. Now I do like how these blue ones came out though. Now that's pretty neat. Ooh. Yeah, but I mean, I'm a color fiend though. So while I feel like it was a bit of a, uh, I hate to use the word failure because honestly, <clears throat> what even is failure? This was an experiment. Did we learn? Yes. Do we know what we learned? Not necessarily, but I'm pretty sure I learned something. At least one thing not to do. I may not have found the perfect answer. So, ooh, no, that one's pretty too. I may not have found the perfect answer I was looking for, but I did learn something that doesn't work, and that's a success. I mean, so don't let the fear of failure stop you from learning and trying and experimenting because the fear, what is it they say, the fear of failure itself causes more failure than actual failing. <laughs> like if you never start, if you never try, if you never do the thing, then well, what kind of results do you anticipate you'll get? Again, trying to get it to not be 
quite so darn blurry. But those are pretty cute. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Because I would love to hear from y'all. And um, yeah, I'll see y'all in our next tutorial. I really love the blue in this. The mica doesn't really shimmer the way I thought it would. I don't know. I don't know. More data is required. If y'all enjoy our free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, please consider joining our craft along club at our website factearthcreations.com. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help keep us producing videos as well as participate in behind the scenes content, exclusive coupons, and all sorts of different stuff. And the more you sub for, the more you get. We ship out monthly um, kits to, uh, you know, based on wherever tier you are and we send out wire and cabs and laser cuts and all sorts of different stuff. So be sure to check that out. We also do shop updates every Monday. There's a calendar of events on our website. So until next time, you guys, happy crafting. Bye. <laughs>